I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R240 server. In this video we're going to specifically focus on drives. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R240 server. Do us a favor, if you think this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, top in, uh, this video is going to be specifically focused on drives, so we're going to cover all the different types of drives that are compatible with the R240. We're going to go over the speeds of the drives, the sizes of the drives, or the max sizes, I should say. Uh, we're going to go over uh, how to actually install them, both in the hot swap, which is easy, and in the cabled server. Uh, then we're going to show you how to actually test them with Dell Diagnostics and a tool we like called HD Sentinel, which allows you to test the uh, power on hours and the health scores, which is a nice secondary test uh, outside of Dell just to test your drives as a whole, uh, especially if you're buying used drives. One thing I do recommend is to be safe uh, with SAS because some of the SAS drives, uh, the uh, wheel bearings on the used ones will wear out um, and you need to be very careful. So definitely test those with Dell Diag and with HD Sentinel. So uh, that's what we're going to cover in this video as a whole. So let's start with the uh, compatible uh, types of drives. There's going to be three. It's going to be SATA, SAS, and solid state. So those will be the uh, the different compatible drives that you can use. So let's start with the speeds. So with SATA, you're going to get speeds of 7.2 R 7.2 K RPMs. There's technically some other kind of oddball ones that you can put in there, but that's the heart of SATA is going to be 7.2 uh, 7.2 K RPMs. Uh, now with SAS, you can do 10 K and 15 K. Um, and again, I, I, as I mentioned earlier, just be careful. Um, it, the older they are with the SAS, the more likely they are to uh, to, to wear out and to, to fail. And that's one of the things that's nice about Dell is they do give the predictive fa failure and they'll give you the amber light to let you know in advance that, hey, this drive is going to fail in the near future, so be careful. Um, so SAS is one that, you know, again, with drives as a whole, I mean, they're uh, mechanical device, they're spinning, so you do need to be careful. Um, now, solid state, which is I'm a big fan of, um, you're going to be able to get speeds of uh, 6 gigabit per second and uh, 12 gigabit per second. That's going to be uh, your max speeds. Okay, so now let's go over the max sizes. All right, so for uh, SATA, the max is going to be 16 terabytes. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, after we go over the maxes, uh, people are uh, come in and say, hey, actually, I've been using, you know, 18 terabytes or 22 terabytes. And I'd love for you to uh, drop a comment down below for the other users. Um, that's what we've uh, uh, personally used uh, is 16 terabytes for SATA, uh, 14 terabytes for SAS, and 7.68 terabytes for uh, SSDs. So that is kind of your max is there, and that's on a, a per uh, a drive basis, not on the whole system. Okay. Um, now, now that we know a little bit more about the uh, the maxes, the speeds, and all that good stuff, why don't we actually show you how to install them? And then after that, we'll show you how to do all the fun tests we talked about. Let's get going. All right, so we're going to start by installing the hot swap, which again is going to be super easy because they're hot swap, uh, which means that uh, you can take them out while they are live. So you're just going to simply push this button to remove the old one, pull the tray out. And so let's say this is our failed drive or a drive we're upgrading. Um, now I wanted to point out two different things. So um, here's the drive that we were going to uh, upgrade with. But here's also if you wanted to install an SSD. Uh, for this machine, you will have to have a, a converter. Uh, the 2.5 inch to 3.5 inch converter so that you can put it in your normal Dell tray. Um, so yes, you can use the 2.5 inch uh, SSDs, uh, which is what you will do. Um, and that's what we're using right now is a Samsung. Um, but in order to do that, you do have to have the converter. So now let's go ahead and show you how to install it. You're just going to click and slide it in nice and easy. And you'll see it click in and we'll do it again with the hard drive just to show you how simple it is. Uh, but again, the hot swaps are super easy so uh, I'm sure more people are going to be interested in how to do the cabled ones so alright now let's show you how to do the cabled one alright so we're going to go ahead and install a drive onto the cabled one which is going to be a little uh, tougher than the hot swap uh, nothing that's uh, challenging uh, but you will need a screwdriver uh, ideally a, a smaller tip Phillips head uh, and then you're going to need a drive and you won't need the actual uh, hot swap tray obviously since it's cabled so we're going to pop the top so you'll notice back here this is where uh, the drive is connected so we're going to need to remove this connection right here and then we're going to push this button down to actually slide it out so first things first let's go ahead and disconnect it so now we've disconnected it from the current drive we're going to push this blue button right here and slide 
the tray out. So there is a tray, but it's a cabled tray that you can see is holding our current drive in there right now. So what we're going to need to do is we are going to need to get all the screws out of the tray. So we'll go ahead and knock all the screws out real quick. All right, so we fast forwarded a bit to the last one. And now we've officially removed our four screws. It's a little stuck, there we go. So we've officially removed our four screws. So you will notice that the drive now is loose and will come out the back. All right, so now we're just gonna put this down and grab our replacement drive. And we're just gonna come slide it back in the same way. And you need to make sure that the, the connection is open right here. And then we're just simply gonna attach the four screws again. So we'll go ahead and line these up and we're gonna add the four screws in. All right, so now we got our final. All right, we got our final screw in. So it is all perfectly connected now. Again, we have our connector facing out. So now we're just going to slide this back in and you want to make sure it's actually flipped upside down as far as the way the drive is so that the blue is facing up. Uh, so we're just going to slide this back in here. And you'll see it when it comes on the opposite side, it's going to click in. And then we're just going to simply grab our connection and put it back in. And we have officially replaced and upgraded our drive. So now what we're gonna show you how to do is to um, run Dell Diagnostics and how to do HD Sentinel. Hey guys, this has been with Cloud Ninjas and today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to test your hard drives and solid state drives with Dell Diagnostics and HD Sentinel. Both Dell Diagnostics and HD Sentinel are great tools for not just testing your hard drives, but for testing all of the other components in your system. Specifically, Dell Diagnostics will test more than just your hard drives. It'll go ahead and test your graphics card, your CPU, your memory, um, your RAID card, your network card, um, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, so it's a really neat tool that allows you to be able to see whether your system is in good health or not. And then HD Sentinel in, uh, in particular will just test your hard drives but you can see cool things like the power on hours um, it'll give you like a health score to tell you like how much life the drive still has so it is a really cool tool both of them are, are very easy to use provide a lot of information and in this video I'm going to show you how to use both of them so let's go ahead and get started first we're going to go ahead and get started with Dell Diagnostics so the first thing you want to do is go ahead and boot up your server. Once you boot up your server, you want to go ahead and press F10. Um, and this will go ahead and bring us into the lifecycle controller. Once we're in lifecycle controller, we can go ahead and scroll down to where it says hardware diagnostics. And then we want to go ahead and click on run hardware diagnostics. And then you'll get this little warning right here. So it's just gonna say it's gonna take several minutes so we can go ahead and accept that. Um, and this will load us into Dell Diagnostics. So actually getting into Dell Diagnostics and actually running the test is pretty simple. So we're just gonna let these tests run and these tests can say take several minutes up to several hours. So go ahead and just wait this out. If you're familiar with 12th gen and 13th gen uh, Dell PowerEdge servers, um, you'll notice that this looks very, very different. In the 12th gen and 13th gen, you can actually see the different tests on the left-hand side of the screen, um, and you have a lot more information on the middle of the screen. Uh, but this, for the 14th gen specifically, it's a little bit more limited, and there is less information. Um, and it's just a lot more simpler of a screen. But it's just going to go ahead and run through all of these tests. Um, and at the bottom, you can kind of, you can pause these tests if you want. Um, and then you can also see like what test specifically is running at that current time, an estimate of how much time is left for that test. So like I said, these tests are going to take a little bit of time. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward. So once that final test has stopped running, it'll go ahead and stop. 
and then we will get a message that pops up on the screen that says success. So this means all of our tests have passed. Um, if you had any issues, then you would get an alternative message saying like, hey, these, these tests failed. Um, and at the very end here, we can actually view all of the information and all the different tests that were ran. Um, and this screen's a little bit more similar as to something we'd see on 12th gen and 13th gen PowerEdge servers. But yeah, we can go through here, see all the test results for each individual test, uh, which is pretty neat. Uh, the information about the system health, the configuration, um, and we can even go into the event log, which is pretty useful. So that is how we do uh, Dell Diagnostics and how we can test our hard drives, but also, you know, everything else in our system. And if you really want to see if your system is healthy, then go ahead and run Dell Diagnostics. It'll give you a lot of information if all the components are working the way that they should. So now I'm going to show you how to test your hard drives with HD Sentinel. Alrighty guys, so I have HD Sentinel pulled up right now, and as you can see, we currently have two drives plugged in. Uh, we have this installed into a storage array where we like to plug in multiple drives at a time so we can test those drives. HD Sentinel is an awesome tool because you can see things like the power on hours, which is great, especially when you're buying used equipment. You can see how long that, that drive has you know, been in use and especially if you want to use this for a big enterprise system you don't want to be using drives that have been you know heavily used because then you have a higher risk of drive failure um, and that's one of the reasons why hd sentinel is such a cool tool but as you can see we can just go ahead and plug a drive into the array and it'll automatically populate within the software. Like I said, lots of information. It'll give you health scores of the drives. As you can see, the two we have up top, they have a 100% health score, while the one at the bottom has a 99%, so all pretty good. So I hope you guys found this video useful, and if you did, go ahead, smash the subscribe, and leave a like. If you're interested in purchasing a custom-built server, or you're looking to buy some drives, we do have plenty of those in stock, so you can go reach out to us at sales at cloudninjas.com sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, guys, thank you for stopping by.